Okay, in this video, I want to do an example of what's known as the hypergeometric distribution. So we'll talk about what this formula makes sense, but it basically says the probability of you selecting x objects of a certain type. What we're going to do is we're going to use capital N sub 1, choose x. We're going to multiply that by capital N sub 2, and we're going to choose n minus x from those objects. And we're going to divide that by capital N divided by little n. Of course, this formula makes no sense without any context. So let's talk about some context into where this, as to where this formula is coming from. If you know the multiplication principle and some basic probability, that's all there is really to this formula, but let's talk about it. So let me read through this real quick and then just summarize it again. So we have a collection of capital N equals N sub 1 plus N sub 2 similar objects. So N sub 1 of them are going to belong to one class. You know, we'll say, for example, in my exam the very first one, I'm using red chips. And N sub 2 of them are going to belong to the second class, you know, we'll, blue chips. So you've got some objects that are similar, but there's some distinction between them. So we've got all these chips, red chips and blue chips. Maybe you have people, so many people total. Maybe there's boys and girls. Maybe you have some number of objects. Some of them work. Some of them are broken. Okay, so you've got this, this class of objects that are similar, but there's something that distinguishes them. So we're going to take a collection of small n objects, and we're going to select from, uh, okay, so let me say this again. A collection of small sub n objects is selected from these capital N number of objects without replacement. We want to find the probability that exactly x of these objects are red. Okay, so suppose I select small sub n objects from the total number. I want to figure out the probability that x of these objects are red. Okay, and of course there's some restrictions on n and x, right? Little n has to be less than or equal to capital N. Uh, x is going to have to be smaller as well. So, um, you know, use some intuition there. I'm not going to write all that stuff down. So we want to find the probability that x of these objects is red. Well, to do this, what do we have to do? We have to choose x objects from, excuse me, we, have to, we want to select x of the red chips in this example. Well, how do we do that? In this case, remember permutations and combinations. I've got n1 red chips total. I want to choose x of those to be red. Okay, well then what's going to happen? So I've got to choose um, x of the red chips and, remember and corresponds to multiplication in probability. So we have to choose x red chips and the remaining chips well, since we're selecting little n of them total, the remaining, which would be n minus x in this case, because we've already selected x red chips, so the remaining n minus x chips that we have to pick are going to be blue. Well, the number of ways we can do that, since there's capital N sub 2 blue chips, it would be n sub 2 choose n minus x. But in total, well, we've got n objects, capital N objects in total to pick from, and again, we're choosing little n of those. So that's where this formula is coming from. That's reticent to say that's all there is to it, but that's all there is to it. Okay, so again, if you're, if you're familiar with just a little bit of basic probability and um, combinations, that's what we're doing. Okay, so let's do a basic quote-unquote real-life example here. Okay, so suppose we've got, you know, suppose you're, you're working at the factory or something and you're, you, you know, you're the, you're the quality control person. Suppose you've got a lot of 100 light bulbs and it's going to be in inspected using the following procedure. So we're going to take five bulbs at random from the 100 light bulbs total and we're going to test them. So if all five of those light bulbs light up, we're going to say, okay, this shipment of 100 light bulbs, we're going to send it out, we're going to say it's good. That whole lot is accepted. Let's suppose, though, that we know somehow uh, that the lot contains 20 defective bulbs. So 20 out of 100 of those bulbs will not light up. So what's the probability that the lot is accepted? That's what we want to know. We want to figure out the probability that the lot is accepted. Well, what's going to happen if the lot is accepted? So the lot is accepted if we choose, well, what do we have to do? We have to choose five good bulbs from the 80 that work. So we're going to choose five good bulbs from the 80 that work, and we're going to choose zero bulbs 
uh, from the 20, from the remaining 20, that don't work. Okay, so we're going to try to figure out, um, so, you know, you can sort of uh, uh, label X however you want to. Let's suppose that capital X, so let's suppose capital X is the random variable. equal to the number of defective fuses, or excuse me, defective lights. Okay, so x is going to be the random variable equal to the number of defective lights. So we're trying to figure out the probability that capital X equals zero. We're trying to figure out the probability of zero defective lights, which means that our lot is going to be accepted. Well, again, so we're going to choose zero from the 20 that are defective, and from the remaining 80 that do work, we want to choose five of those. So that's going to be my numerator, and we're going to divide that. Well, the total number of objects, the total number of light bulbs, again, to choose from is 100, and we're simply going to have 100, and we want to choose, again, five of those objects. That's how many we're, we're computing in general. Okay, so now it's just arithmetic. Um, remember to, to, to calculate this stuff. So um, n choose r, in case you've forgotten, that's uh, n factorial over r factorial, and then we do capital N minus r factorial. Again, you don't really want to do this stuff by hand. I'll write it out just for, just for fun. So 20 choose, zero, 20 choose 0, that would be 20 factorial over 0 factorial. Then we would do 20 minus 0, which would be 20 factorial. Recall that 0 factorial is 1. So 0 factorial is not 0, it equals 1. And then we've got uh, 80 choose 5, well that's 80 factorial over 5 factorial. And again we take the difference, so 80 minus 5 is going to be 75 factorial. If you've forgotten factorials, I've got videos on those too. And then 100 choose 5, that's going to be 100 factorial um, divided by 5 factorial multiplied by 95 factorial. So again, I'm not going to compute all of this stuff. Uh, since 0 factorial equals 1, 20 factorial over 20 factorial is also going to be equal to 1. You can compute either with a, you know, do it by hand or with a calculator, or you can even type this, you can even type in 80 choose 5 into, say, a Google search engine, and it'll give you the correct number. So it turns out that 80 choose 5, that turns out to be the number 19,513. 100 choose 5 is going to be equal to, I got 61,110. And if you simplify all this, you get 0. Point, let me see, 3193. So even though, uh, you know, 20% of the light bulbs are defective, right, 20% are defective, it turns out that the probability of that shipment getting accepted is actually a little bit over uh, almost 32%. So roughly equal to, uh, so 31.93%, roughly equal to 32%. So the probability that you get zero defective light bulbs, which means you ship off that, that shipment of light bulbs, 20 of which are bad, 80 of which are good, you're going to ship off that, that lot of light bulbs with a probability of roughly equal to 32%.